Hi guys and welcome to this week's BartenderHQ.com podcast. On this week's show we have a little bit of a roundup from the Imbibe show, the uh, big drinks industry trade show uh, that happened over here in London a couple of weeks ago, a little bit of a, an overview of that and also I'm going to be launching um, the theflareproject.com uh, now this is going to be a huge project that I want everyone to be involved in so I need your help. Welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ. Here's your host, David Scooby Sangwell. Okay, so first of all, a couple of weeks ago, I went down to Imbibe Live down in London at um, at the Kensington Olympia, uh, which was a huge, huge venue, absolutely packed with different uh, spirit brands and all sorts of cool stuff. And uh, I saw so many gins. I mean, I, I've got to say the the huge takeaway from this is how popular gin is at the moment. Uh, so we are going to have a bit of a feature on gin coming up in the next few weeks. Um, so keep a lookout for that. Basically, we're going to work out how to make the perfect gin and tonic. Uh, I've got one of the liquor brands that's going to be providing us some gin, so that's quite nice. And uh, and we'll be trying out a whole bunch of different ways uh, to kind of customise the gin and tonic. So keep your eye out for that one. Um, but having a walk around the floor uh, down at Imbibe, um, huge numbers of different spirits. Uh, the beers weren't so heavy. There were a few craft breweries down there, um, and there was some uh, some sort of European beers and that sort of thing featured. Uh, but there was nothing from the big brands that I saw, at least uh, from like your Carlsbergs, your Heinekens, and your uh, your Budweisers, anyone like that. Nobody really exhibiting for that sort of thing. There was a lot, an awful lot of craft distilleries um so there were an awful lot of small batch gins uh, really just kind of a bit of everything for anyone that's into their spirits uh we saw um firestarter vodka um with their own energy drink which is uh fire extinguisher themed it's an interesting concept it's quite cool and it's really good actually for table service uh, if you're doing bottle service you're selling the whole bottles um, out to your parties. Uh, this stuff's actually really cool, especially if you're in some some sort of a novelty kind of venue. Uh, it'd work really well at Reflex, I think. Um, so you'd basically get yourself a fire extinguisher full of vodka. The the sort of top section of it uh, was essentially um, your pour spout, so it's dead easy for people to pour. They've got their own branded version of an energy drink that goes along with it, um, and that was really cool. I spent a little bit of time uh, down at Cellar Trends as well, had a look at the new Angostura rums that were being launched the day after Imbibe, so they should actually be out and available now with the suppliers in the UK. They were really, really good. Had a little taste of those. I got a little bit of history of Purser's Rum, which I think I'm going to play for you now. Yeah, um, I'd say, we are definitely the one with the British lady. Um, can we know what July the 31st in 1970, why that was so important? It's like a date to the Royal Navy. Rum rations. Rum rations, there we go. Um, yeah, it was, the, it was known as Black Top Day. It was the last day of the one national after that, and the one was abolished. The main reason for that is that um, the one they were drinking was 24.5%, and they were giving, giving up uh, about 100 mil of that a day to drink. Doesn't sound too bad, but in the 1970s, ships had nuclear weapons on them. And do we really need people sailing around uh, yes. <laughs> having, having issues at home and uh, loads of rum and red buttons not, and they're not allowed to touch? Probably a good idea to stop the run. There's no depression here. Um, so in, in 1980, a gentleman named Charles Tobias um, what, uh, decided that he wanted to promotion, make, make rum commercially available. So he spoke to the, well, he did a bit before then, but he spoke to the British Navy and said, Can you buy me rum recipes um, off the British Navy? The British Navy went, like, Hell no. Even though they weren't actually going to do anything with it, they wanted to keep hold of it. Um, after many years of two and fro, Charles Tobias, with an agreement, um, put in to a contract that um, with every bottle sold, we would make a, a, a percentage donation to the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, uh, Charles and Fun. So, to this day, we've given 1.6 million to um, our own uh, Navy and, um, and Royal Marines 
um, which is a very rare charity because any uh, group kind of that have health problems or injuries, this, this fund goes towards helping with rehabilitation and things just to make their life generally easier. So it's, it's very um, worthy cause. Which is why we call ourselves the reason we call ourselves the only Navy run nobody else does this. So as you can see, there's a lot of um, a lot of education going on down at Imbibe. There's a lot of um, a lot of bartenders there, a lot of bar owners, brand owners reaching out. Uh, had some great cocktails. Actually, the first place that I bumped into was the Bowl Stand, and the guys from Bowls were there. Um, tried out a couple of their new uh, liqueurs from Bowls. So the elderflower liqueur that they're doing is very very tasty. Uh, they're also doing a new blackberry liqueur. It's not a creme de mure, so it doesn't have the heavy sugar content of a lot of the others. Uh, and it was, again, very, very tasty. Really, really good flavours coming from them. The other one that they were promoting was the uh, natural yoghurt that's been around for a little while now. Uh, but still kind of not been taken up. I don't think that's done what it needs to do yet. I don't think people have quite embraced it yet. So if you've got a cool recipe, by the way, for the bowls, uh, natural yoghurt, please let me know. Uh, drop me a line, david at bartenderhq.com, or uh, drop us a message through the website, or you can leave us a voicemail uh, through the usual page on the website. Just click that Ask Me a Question button right up at the top there. So after we'd finished off at Imbibe, uh, obviously had a good chat with different people there. You know, the guys from... Um, Fee Bitters, um, and a, a few others. After we'd finished off there, I headed round to the Roadhouse uh, in Covent Garden, and uh, this is a bit of an interesting part of my big announcement, actually. I am entering Roadhouse next year. That is the plan. Now, I used to play a bartender a lot, as a lot of you will know. Uh, my kind of history started off uh, in pubs and bars, really wanted to get into the flair, taught myself a bit, got to the point where I could compete at Roadhouse around about 2006. I never did particularly well. I think it was about 2005, 2006 I last entered. Um, came in sort of mid-table, but nothing nothing blowing the world away. Um, and then I did the TGI Fridays stuff and came second in the UK with them before I went out to Dubai. Um, but my plan is that I want to go back to the Roadhouse and I want to enter the Roadhouse, one of the UK heats, and hopefully get through to the UK finals. Um, but I don't have any new moves. Uh, I've got the same moves pretty much that I was doing five, six years ago. The advantage of that is that I hit all of the moves that I do. I don't drop stuff when I'm behind the bar and that kind of thing. But I really want to start to do some more advanced stuff and I want to do some new stuff that maybe flair bartenders haven't done or stuff that's been forgotten, some of the older moves that uh, some of the classic bartenders, people like Scott Young and uh, and some of the early guys uh, used to do that's kind of fallen by the wayside maybe a little bit. So here is what we're doing. I'm launching theflareproject.com. Um, it's all within uh, Bartender HQ, so you won't be taken off to some other site, but theflareproject.com is what you want to put in, and you will arrive on the right part of the Bartender HQ page. And um, what we're going to do is I need you guys to submit videos for me. I need you to give me moves, give me a little sequence, uh, you know, maximum sort of 15 seconds. I don't want any huge chunks of your routines. What I would like is a little signature move that you do, or if you're a mixology bartender who does the kind of funky stuff with the jiggers and funky little moves um, that aren't necessarily flair, but, uh, but you know, they're the kind of the new style of flair that's kind of coming along in these uh, craft bars. I want to see what you're doing and I want you to teach me. Uh, and I want to share these, uh, these little moves with the community. So... Every week, I will be trying to get a new move from somebody and feature it on the podcast. And then, the following week, you will see my efforts in trying to learn this move. Just to give you a bit of an example, at um, at the West Midlands Flare Club last week, I got Dave Chuvalaris, uh, who is a TGI Fridays bartender who has won in the past the Prepare to Flare at the Roadhouse, which is their kind of entry new bartender level. Um, I got him to record me a little introduction and uh, his move. So uh, let's go straight over to Dave and uh, and see what he's got for us. Oh, 
Uh, hello, my name is Dave Tumlaris. I'm a flair bartender for TGI Fridays in Birmingham. And this is my uh, move for Scooby's crowdsourced roadhouse routine. Okay, so explain the move to me, Dave. Pretty simple, all we're going to do is a uh, nice working player once over, bring it in onto the same arm, which is your strongest arm, bounce it back off into a dead bounce. So, no spills, then you can go back into your routine. So there you go guys, that should give you a quick um, overview of the sort of thing that I'm looking for. I need a little move that I can pop into a sequence or a short sequence of moves from you guys. But please send me a little introduction video telling me who you are and uh, where you work, what you've done in the past. It'd be awesome. Uh, and obviously then you'll get a little shout out on the podcast. And then also um, send me a video of the move. If you've got access to an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus and you can do the slow motion video even better. Uh, just makes it easier for me to work out exactly what you're doing. Um, and please, 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 please film it in landscape. I don't want <laughs> these cell phone videos where you've got your phone upright and you've got the this kind of tube of video like this. Uh, please hold your phone sideways um, because once I've done the roadhouse next year, uh, once I've done the competition and that sort of thing, and obviously you guys are following along with all my progress getting ready for it, uh, there will be a full video of my routine and I'm going to try and uh, cut in all of your moves alongside mine in the final video. So you'll get uh, featured when I find your move and when I get started on it and you'll also get featured in the final video from the Roadhouse. Um, alongside this, if you have a liquor brand, if you have uh, an equipment brand, if you want to donate some tins to have your, your logo featured on them at the Roadhouse, if you want to uh, donate me any spirits to practice with if you want to basically if you want to get involved with anything um, along the lines of this project please get in touch I would be delighted to work with some people along the same lines if you are a DJ and you want to help me out with getting my music ready for this routine if you are a barback who wants to be at one side of me and help me out on the day uh, or if you want to just bar back for me on the day that'd be great if you've got a practice bar that you want to lend me to to use and feature in the videos you're welcome to do that um, any sort of support that you want to give I would be delighted and the other thing that I really need you guys to do is even if you can't donate a move or even if you can I don't mind um, please share this with other bartenders I want other bartenders to know about the flare project um, send everyone to the website and uh, let's get this to be a really cool thing and we will try and get some press for it and try and get uh, flare, barting, flare bartending into the media a little bit more. Uh, it'd be really cool if we can get it featured on some TV shows or newspapers or other podcasts. If you've got another podcast you want to feature it on, let me know. I'll, we'll have a chat. We'll jump on Skype. It'd be cool. Um, so that's it. Yeah. Uh, check out theflareproject.com. You'll be directed to the right part of the website and join me on this journey on theflareproject.com. In the meantime, guys, you can find me on all the usual channels on Facebook. You can find us at Bartender HQ, on Twitter at Bartender HQ, on Instagram at Bartender HQ Picks, and I will probably be putting a few of the little practice videos into Instagram as well because it works quite nicely with the, uh, the short format. Um, obviously, subscribe on the YouTube channel because this flare stuff is going to look a lot better on YouTube than it sounds on a podcast. All you're going to hear is the tins going in and out. So, um, that's it for this week, guys. Uh, catch you next week. And don't forget, get over to theflareproject.com. Sign up and I will send you all the updates. Cheers, guys. Thanks for listening to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ.